We are glad to welcome you to our channel. Kindly subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends and relations. And click on the bell icon for instant notification whenever new videos are uploaded on this channel. Rest assured that we are going to have a very exciting and inspiring discussion. Let's dive into the lesson right away. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's lesson video on how best to write a winning debate. I am excited to share valuable insights on how you can craft a compelling debate that captures your audience's attention. And a special shout out to our subscriber, Alpha Kuyate, for providing an interesting debate prompt. We will be using that as a basis for our discussion today. This is English Classes Online, and I am your host, Benjamin. Let's dive right in. From the comments section, what we have uh, is from Alpha Kuyate, one of our highly esteemed viewers. Uh, in his comments, Kuyate provides a debate writing prompt, which is as follows. Now he termed it debate question. Boys are most influenced by their fathers and girls are most influenced by their mothers. Do you agree or disagree? Use specific reasons to support your opinion. As you can see, Alpha Kuyate's debate question requires you to either agree or disagree with the given statement. In debate writing in the West African Senior School Certificate Examination, for example, you are required to write a speech presenting your arguments for or against the given motion. In this prompt, however, you are simply instructed to use specific reasons to support your opinion. Now, it is important to note that debate writing and opinion essay writing are closely related. Both forms of writing share common elements, such as presenting a clear thesis providing supporting evidence and addressing potential counterarguments. However, debate writing often involves a more interactive and dynamic approach as it requires anticipating and responding to opposing viewpoints in real time. All right? Now, what we have from the comments section has been specifically posed as a debate question. So I am going to show you exactly how best to present your arguments in a winning debate. And this brings us to tip number one, understand the prompt. This is important. Before you begin writing, make sure you thoroughly understand the essay prompt. In this case, we are given a statement to agree or disagree with. Boys are most influenced by their fathers and girls are most influenced by their mothers. Do you agree or disagree? Use specific reasons to support your opinion. Now, this kind of question uh, frequently occurs in the IELTS tests, all right? The, the kind of debate questions that feature frequently in the West African Senior School Certificate Examination specifically require you to present your arguments uh, either for or against, the, against a given topic, all right? So now it is important to note that any type of essay prompt can feature in any English exam, all right, depending on the decision of the examiners, okay? Now, what you need to do is to take time to analyze the prompt and identify the key elements you need to address your essay. And then you have to comply with the instruction. 
Tip number two, choose a strong position. That's the second tip for writing a winning debate. Choose a strong position. Before you start writing, take a stance that you are passionate about and that you can support with evidence. You know, there are two sides to every argument and you either have to agree or disagree. In, in other words, you are either supporting the giving motion or you are opposing it, okay? Your stance will be the foundation of your entire essay. So make sure it is well-defined and clear. You don't have to sit in, uh, on the fence, so to say. You have to take a clear uh, stance, okay? Tip number three, develop a strong thesis. A thesis or a thesis statement is the main idea in a piece of writing. In other words, your thesis is your central argument, okay? So developing a strong thesis is next uh, in our tips. And uh, of course, your thesis should clearly state your stance on the topic. Once you have chosen a position, the position you have chosen automatically provides you the clear ground for your thesis, okay? For instance, if you are arguing against traditional gender roles uh, in the topic we are giving, your thesis might highlight the complex dynamics of parent-child relationships. So you are saying that, well, uh, child uh, development is not determined uh, just by the gender of the child uh, in relation to the, the parent. It's not a situation as simple as boys are most influenced by their fathers and girls by their mothers. No, it's more complex than that. So that's the stand you are taking. For example, you can say as follows or write as follows. Although the influence of parents is undeniably significant, the claim that boys are exclusively influenced by their fathers and girls by their mothers is untenable in view of the complex dynamics of parent-child relationship. Besides, children are complex individuals whose lives are shaped by a combination of factors. You see, you have, you have made your stand very clear. You disagree with that uh, that uh, that motion and you have made your stand quite clear. Now that stand you are actually making clear is your thesis. That is your viewpoint. That is your opinion, okay? Now, tip number four, strong supporting evidence. Once you have developed a strong thesis, you need strong supporting evidence to back it up. In both debates and opinion essays, the strength of your argument relies on the quality of supporting evidence. Be sure to include specific examples, facts, or statistics that reinforce your position and make your argument more persuasive. For example, uh, in this argument, you can say fathers often serve as role models for their sons instilling qualities like resilience and independence. However, it is equally crucial to recognize the valuable contributions mothers make in nurturing emotional intelligence, communication skills, and interpersonal relationship in both boys and girls. So you are saying that it's not as simple as boys are influenced by fathers and girls by mothers, no. You are saying that, you know, each parent has a role to play in the development of the child. That is the stand you have taken and you have provided uh, supporting evidence, okay? Now, tip number five, addressing counter arguments, okay? Uh, that's another as aspect, okay? Another important thing to note. 
you need to anticipate potential opposing viewpoints and provide reasoned responses to strengthen your overall position, okay? This shows a thorough understanding of the topic and enhances your credibility as a debater or an essay writer, okay? For example, you can, you know, present or address a counter argument as follows. Though some argue for traditional gender roles, it is essential to consider the individuality of children and the diverse ways in which both parents can contribute meaningfully to their development. All right, so you anticipate a counter argument from the opposition uh, side or team, and then you, you say something to make it invalid or to demolish it uh, if you like. Now, moving further, we look at tip number six, develop a logical structure, all right? A well-organized essay is crucial for keeping your readers engaged and structure is very important, uh, not only in, in constructing a house or a building, but also in writing uh, a good piece of writing, all right? You need to start with a captivating introduction that introduces the topic and your thesis, okay? Then you present your arguments in a clear, logical order. Each paragraph should focus on a single point and transition smoothly to the next. So you need to develop a logical structure. That's really important. So now it's time to apply the tips we have learned to Alpha Kuyate's debate question. All right? Uh, don't forget the question, the debate question, which we have tagged uh, as a prompt here. Boys are most influenced by their fathers and girls are most influenced by their mothers. Do you agree or disagree? Use specific reasons to support your opinion. Okay, so now, Let's begin with our first paragraph. Of course, if you anticipate that, uh, of course, in every debate, uh, the writer should anticipate that it could be presented as a speech because in a debate, of course, you are expected to speak if you are the chief speaker or one of the speakers, you are expected to present your arguments. So now you, you look at a situation where you are participating in a debate, okay? Then you can begin by saying, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or in, in a typical debate setting, uh, as we usually have it in my country, uh, you begin to uh, extend your greetings in a, a descending order from up, you know, to the, the down. And of course, every debate has a chairman. So you can say, good afternoon, or you simply say, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, panel of judges, timekeeper, co-debaters, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so you, 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 you look at a situation where you have to address the personalities that are present at that, uh, uh, on that occasion. And so that, or you simply can say, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we examine the interesting question of parental influence on children. Of course, that is the, the subject matter. That's the subject for discussion. So you take notes of what is the subject matter and you can begin with it, okay? It is often asserted that boys are most influenced by their fathers and girls by their mothers. However, I respectfully disagree with this obviously faulty notion 
that parental influence is strictly determined by gender. In my opinion, children are complex individuals whose lives are shaped by a combination of factors. You see, you, you have laid the foundation for presenting your argument. You have taken a stand and you have already uh, presented your thesis. So let's now continue. The second paragraph could be as follows. You now begin to, you pick a particular key point and then you discuss it in a paragraph. Then you go to the next paragraph and discuss the next point. And that's the way uh, to write a very, very good essay. Now let's look at the second paragraph. One key reason to challenge this proposition is the fact that fathers and mothers can play diverse roles in a child's development, regardless of gender. All right. So after all, sometimes you have a single mother, you know, bringing up uh, her son. And we have many, uh, you know, important personalities, great men in, in the society who have actually achieved success and they attribute the success to their single mother. So that, that is exactly what we are saying, that, you know, it, it's not as simple as, you know, concluding that boys are in, influenced by their fathers and girls by their mothers. Sometimes you may have a single father, you know, in a, a situation where a man lost his wife and at a time when the the the, the children, the girl, the uh, the girl child, for instance, you know, is still uh, uh, very tender. Uh, some girl children didn't even know their mother because they lost their mother at infancy. And so, what will you say about such a situation? So, the development of that girl cannot be really attributed to the role played by the mother. Sometimes it is the father who plays the role. So that's exactly uh, the argument. Now, let's continue. Research consistently demonstrates that both parents contribute significantly to various aspects of a, child, a child's upbringing, even where both parents are present, OK? to bring up the child. They play different roles. Apart from instilling qualities like resilience, resilience and independence in their sons, fathers are equally capable of nurturing emotional intelligence and inculcating other qualities in their daughters as well, okay? There are many ladies in this society who have actually achieved success and when they uh, tell their success stories, some of them attribute the qualities they exhibit to uh, the influence uh, from their fathers, okay? Some didn't even have the privilege of knowing their mother. So they only had their father there. So that's exactly what we are saying. Likewise, mothers can play an active role in encouraging adventurous and independent behavior in their sons, just as they help in, to strengthen the right qualities in their daughters, okay? So each parent is capable of playing any kind of role, either in the life of the boy or in the life of the girl. So each parent-child relationship is unique and the influence a parent has on their child is shaped by the specific dynamics, communication styles, and personalities within that relationship. It is overly simplistic to generalize these dynamics based solely on gender. You know, when, when you then uh, conclude that it, this, it is fathers that have to play this role in the life of the boys, and it is mothers that have to play this role in the li lives of their mothers. It, it is really not tenable. It is, it is an invalid argument, okay? 
It is uh, a fallacy, if you like. Now let's go to the next point. Another crucial point to consider is that children are exposed to a multitude of external influences beyond their immediate family. Peers, teachers, mentors, and societal norms all contribute to shaping a child's worldview and behavior. By focusing solely on parental influence, we may overlook the impact of these external factors. For instance, a child's relationship with a mentor or a teacher can have a profound influence on their values and aspirations. Okay? I, I, and of course, sometimes uh, children who live in the boarding schools, they spend a lot of time away from their parents. And so they, they have their, their teachers there uh, as role models, okay? In conclusion, by considering the diverse roles that both parents can play and acknowledging the multitude of external influences on a child's development, we can see clearly the fallacy of the notion that parental influence is strictly determined by gender. Okay, so we can see that it is actually is completely fallacious. It is fallacious to conclude that boys are the lives of boys are shaped by their fathers and the lives of girls shaped by their mothers. It, it is completely uh, not true. It, it is not true. Children are complex individuals shaped by a combination of factors and recognizing this complexity is essential for a more comprehensive understanding of their development. Okay, so that is exactly uh, what we have here. So you can end up by simply saying thank you or thank you for listening or thank you for your patience. Now, uh, in, in summing up, I want you to know that crafting a winning debate involves understanding the prompt, choosing a strong position, developing a strong thesis with strong supporting evidence, structuring your argument effectively, and addressing counter-arguments politely. I encourage you to apply these tips, not just in debates, but in various forms of persuasive writing. Thank you for joining us today, and a big thanks to Alpha Kuyate for this thought-provoking debate question. Stay tuned for more engaging lessons. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon. You will find the bell icon. Click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded, you will be instantly notified. If you have actually enjoyed the video, like and share the video with your friends and relatives. This is very important. If you have any comments, leave your comments below. Any questions, any suggestions, we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you in the new video. Thank you.